Hey guys, Timmy D with Mid South 360 here on a chilly, almost end of the month of March 2019. Uh, a little unseasonably cool. So today's video is actually going to be pretty short, but I think a lot of guys and girls have uh, possibly wondered. Well, I'm trying to get into doing drone mapping. You know, I've got limited funds. You know, what can I get? How can I save money? Uh, on my equipment and so one of the questions that's come up is can you use the reach M plus for a rover and a base unit and I think the answer to that is yes and so you're gonna see I mean back behind me uh, I've got my setup and I'll have some close-up shots but I have the reach uh, the M plus mounted on a um, I forget the dimensions it's probably about a five and a half inch aluminum ground plane and uh, have it up nice and in the air. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two uh, prism poles and I'm going to, they're already logging. So I'll do a survey point. I'm going to do 10 minutes at every spot I move to. And so I will give you a Google Earth picture after I post process this and you can see where the two of them are side by side. And so we actually have trees. I mean, there's a tree here, a tree there, wide open to the to the north there's trees over to the um to the east and so you know this is not this is not the ideal situation but what i want to do is i want to put this thing up and we're going to go around and i'm going to just go and log some different places in my yard and i may even go on out a little further but i'm going to purposefully try to get up a little closer to the house again when you're doing this you want to be in the wide open um, but sometimes you do have to be a little closer uh, to trees and buildings and you'd like and so we're going to see how the log files compare on both units uh, For the same time frame and so I'll try to stack them uh, and do screenshots so that you can see if we had any uh, uh, Complete cycle breaks uh, on either unit and uh, but I think that you're going to see I've done some previous tests and I think that you're going to find out that the reach M plus can in fact uh, work as a as a base and a rover now you know one of the downsides of using if you buy the reach m plus if you are dead set and want to use rtk if you're not wanting to do post-processing you know then you have to buy the extra LoRa antenna for it so that you can communicate back and forth with the base unit um, so that's going to be an additional cost there but if you're just looking to get in and do post-processing then, man, I think you're going to find the M+. Plus. We'll see when all the, the details come in, but I think you're going to find it's a very viable option for having, say, if you got two of those, now you can put one on your, your drone. If you want to do uh, PPK flights on your, say, Phantom 4. And then, uh, but if not, if you're just going to do regular old ground control points, which is still king in my book, if you want to do ground control points, you have one, M plus for your base, another one for your rover, and again, the rover unit can double as a unit to go out and do your GCPs and then also put it on your drone. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so in this uh, pretty short video, I just wanted to do a test to compare the Reach RS compared to the Reach M plus. And so for the M plus, and you can see in the little video clip that I'm going to show. Um, it has, I think it's about, I forgot the millimeters, but it's probably about five and a half to six inches is the uh, size of the aluminum ground plane that's underneath it. And so I just use an adapter to get it centered up and put it on a prism pole. And then I took both of those side by side and just walked them around in different places. And so I will show you some photos of the different locations and you're also going to see that I placed these in a less than desirable location because I wanted to see well how would this compare um, as far as using the M plus for a rover and a base unit if you're trying to save money you know will it work pretty effectively I think the answer to that is yes and so we're just going to kind of dive in and look and so what I have right here in the screen, I've already processed these, okay? And so this is the M-plus 
coordinates, and these are the post-processed um, coordinates. And then I'm going to show you, um, I think I've already saved this, but I'm going to go. So now what I'm going to look at is, I think, RS, okay? So this is the RS um, satellites, and you can see the, the quality of the, the data signal there. And then this is for the M+. Plus. And it's it's still good, and so these were side by side. This is done kind of in the late afternoon, and the date, and of course it can change depending on where your satellites are. So you can learn to try to do survey work when the satellite positions are going to be optimal. And then another thing I did is I went. Let's go back to post process Oops, that's field coordinates and they're post processed so then I went and I said I want to do an inverse computation and so I could go what I did is I went through each site side by side and I use the geodetic distance down here and so easy serve will compare the two points and tell you what their precise distance so I went and did this for every point two three and four I forgot to do it on point number one now let's look at this and so here's the the difference right here that is three millimeters is that right so the dis right this first column right here this is the distance that it shows in the post processing between the two units side by side this is where I took my Leica laser and I l measured the distance between the two prism pole extensions so literally between the two poles then those two poles added together and divided by two to get your true center point was 27.15 millimeters so I took um, this distance here and that adds your 27 uh, millimeters to it and so now that becomes the laser measured distance and then you can see right here this is the difference between GPS processed and laser measured distance between the two units and very very accurate of course I mean they're right here beside each other but nonetheless um, they were very consistent with the laser measuring so that was good and I'm going to show you the Google Earth and you'll be able to see the the path the traverse path again I did this so it'd be up by the house kind of less than desirable if you were to purchase an M plus two of them one to use as a, a base unit and one to use as a rover then you know you're going to purposefully look for wide open areas I purposefully got up close to the house um, to be in a little bit less than desirable situations and again you can see so the one picture I was in the front yard and then on on the the very last point point number four I was between two houses with um, a, a Bradford pear that's already been bloomed out already has foliage on it over to the west some of the other um, trees around do not have full foliage yet um, but nonetheless I would never place a GCP right there I mean unless it was just dead necessary but but it's still processed just fine so I'm gonna say that if you use the M plus for the reach uh, excuse me for the the base and the rover that you can save some money and have good results with that I hope this has been helpful and if you have any questions post them below have a great day